Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to move clips over from Avid Media Composer to Adobe After Effects and back. I'm going to show you two different methods. The first one is just an example how to move clips over manually. The second one is for a whole sequence and a larger number of clips. This video is split up into chapters. They appear as segments down here in the scrubber bar, but you can also find them in the video description. All right. This is my sequence here, and in the sequence I have two shots that I want to bring over to Adobe After Effects. I labeled both shots with a marker. Here you can see the names of those markers. The way I labeled them here is not perfect, but just an example. The first method works well for everyone who has only a handful of shots to bring over to Adobe After Effects. The idea is to just export a preview file and then work with the original footage in After Effects. My first step is to add a bunch of time codes and other information to all the clips that I want to export. I prepared a little preset that I saved in a bin, so I can just drag and drop it whenever I need it. Let's take a look at what exactly I'm adding here. Okay, I'm just going to disable everything here and walk you through step by step. The first display is the name of the sequence I'm working in. The second one is the sequence time code. That way, later when I go back to Media Composer, I always know what sequence to look at as a reference. I know where exactly the shot was and in what sequence. So in case anything has changed later, I know which sequence to use as a reference. The third display is the original source clip name. And the fourth display, the source time code. That way, when I'm in After Effects, I know exactly which clip to use and where my in and out points are. And then I'm also using this little text window here. That is just the project name and the VFX shot number. So when I'm dragging and dropping this on all my VFX shots, all I have to do is change the shot number here. When I'm exporting my preview file for After Effects, I would always make sure to not only export the VFX shots, but add a few seconds before and after those shots, so that I or the VFX artist can watch the VFX shots within a larger context. In my case, this is a tiny sequence, so I'm just going to export all of it. Okay, you go to File, I'll put Export to File. I'm exporting a MOV with H.264 codec and a low bit rate, because this is really just a preview reference file. But if you want to make sure your playback is good, you could also export a file with a nicer codec. And I'm also adding audio to the file. Okay, save. Here I'm adding my project name, the date, and the VFX shot numbers. If you're on a larger project, you might want to come up with a better labeling, but for this tiny sequence here, that's good enough. Okay, save. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to After Effects. Okay, first thing, I would create a basic project structure. Now you can just drag and drop your QuickTime file into After Effects. Okay, just by looking at this file, I know exactly which original clip I need. If you have more than two or three VFX shots, it probably makes sense to create a little list with a name, time codes, shot number, and so on. That way you don't even have to look at this file to find those shots. But since I'm only working on two shots for this example, I'm okay just looking at this file. All right, this is the original file that I want to work on. You can also just drag and drop it into your folder. Okay, now I'm going to create a new composition. I'm going to match the frame size of my composition with my original source clip and the length of it with my reference file. Okay. Now I'm inserting my reference file. I'm just going to resize this clip so it matches my 4K sequence. And then I'm navigating to the first frame of my VFX shot to find the in point. Again, if you would just make a list with in and out points, that would be a little bit faster. Now I'm setting the in point in my original clip and the out point, and insert it to my sequence. You can check if it matches your reference file by just turning it on and off. This looks perfect. And now you could start working on this shot and do whatever you would like to do with it. You're using the original source file, you're avoiding any kind of extra compression by working directly with this file, so you're really gonna get the best quality out of it. Before we move on, let's take a look at another way of bringing clips over to After Effects by exporting an AAF. All right, same test sequence, but this time I want to bring all shots over to After Effects. And because it would take a long time to find all those in and out points in After Effects again, I want to transfer this whole sequence directly from Media Composer to After Effects. In my case, the sequence is offline. All my footage has been transcoded to DNXLB. 
And because I want to work with my high-risk footage and not with those offline clips, I have to relink those files. I can either do that here in Media Composer, which is pretty quick and easy, but it does also somehow work in After Effects. So I'm just gonna show you both techniques. First, you navigate to your bin or bins with all your original AMA files. You select a sequence, right click, relink. You click on selected items in all open bins. Here I navigate to tape name or source file name. I also set disk label names for everything so that would work as well in my case. Ignore extension. I'm going to deselect match case and click OK. A really easy way to make sure the relinking process worked out is by just match framing your clip. Here I can see immediately that this is a linked only file. Before I export my sequence, I'm going to delete all tracks that are not necessary, just so the file is as simple and clean as possible. Now I go to File, Output, Export to File. Options, here we select AAF. Make sure AAF Edit Protocol is selected. In this case, we only need the video files. And here we select Link to Don't Export Media, so we're not going to add any unnecessary compression and we're actually working with the original files. Okay, save. Come up with a smart file name again and save again. All right, let's switch back to After Effects. And this is where the problem kind of starts because as of March 2021, it is not possible to import an AF from Avid in After Effects, at least not if you're working on the most recent Mac. I'm not sure how that is currently on Windows. There used to be a function called Pro Import After Effects. If you see that inside your After Effects version, you can import the AEF. If you don't have that option, as in my case, we will have to do a little Premiere Pro detour. If this function becomes available again in the future, I will make sure to add that to the comments section here on YouTube. But for now, if you don't have the Pro Import After Effects button, switch over to Premiere Pro. Okay, here we are in Adobe Premiere, but this is not a problem at all. It is pretty fast and easy. Just navigate to your AAF. You can drag and drop that to Premiere. Open your sequence. This should be online without having to relink anything. Here you just select your clips, right click, replace with After Effects composition. I still have my After Effects project open. Therefore, Adobe transferred everything directly to this project. Here you can organize your files. You have the original clips in the sequence. In this case, you don't have to relink anything because you've already done that in Avid. So altogether, I think this is pretty fast and easy. If you have transferred your offline sequence, you can go to your footage, right click and replace your offline files here with your high res files. This is not as easy as doing that in Avid but still faster than finding your in and out points in After Effects. What I'm actually doing often is a mix of the first and the second method. I'm exporting a little QuickTime preview with time codes, audio tracks, and a little extra space in the beginning and the end. And then I would bring over my AAF. That way I have the full sequence here. I can listen to the audio and I'm still able to work with the original footage. Okay, let's take a look at how to bring the shots back to Media Composer. I'm done with my first VFX shot here. I also have a version with the alpha channel of this shot because people keep asking me how to bring shots with alpha channel back to Media Composer. So I'm going to export two different versions. Let's start with the full composition. We open our render window, drag and drop our first shot in here. Now we have to decide if we want to bring the full 4K shot in high resolution back to Media Composer or just a preview file. This is something you really need to know for yourself in my case, I'm just gonna export a little preview version because my sequence in Avid is offline anyways. There's a good chance the shot is gonna change a couple more times. So I'm going to change my export settings to HD. I go to best settings and change the resolution to half. That way it's gonna be 1080 file. Here, I click on lose less. I'm going to export a QuickTime file, format options. And here again, this is really your decision what quality and what codecs you like to work with. I'm gonna go with an Avid codec. And since all my footage in Avid is offline, I'm going with a DNxLB. So this is just a low res preview file. If you want to send your shot over in high quality, I would go with at least DNxHXQ 10-bit. 
but there are even better options if you need them. Okay, but for now I'm going with the LB file, click OK, OK, select the render destination, click save again, and now we just have to export the file. Okay, I'm also going to export the same file with alpha channel, just so you can see how I would do that. Again, I'm changing this to HD, but you can ignore this if you want to send the high res file. Since this is a graphics only clip, I'm going to use the animation codec, but it is also possible to export a DNX file with alpha channel. Okay, here I'm going to select RGB plus alpha and pre-multiplied. Okay, select your name and destination and export. Okay, let's switch back to Avid Media Composer. Here we go to input, source browser, and now we can link our files. This is relatively new that you can link a file with alpha channel. It's still okay to import it, but you can also link the file. Link. You can see that Avid automatically applies the key to our clip with alpha channel. But before I do anything with those clips, I want to consolidate or transcode them. We exported the full composition in the exact video codec we are already working with, so we can just consolidate it. Right click consolidate, select your target drive and consolidate. The clip with the alpha channel has an animation codec, so we have to transcode it. And again, I'm choosing an offline codec for now. Okay, let's take a look at our files. I'm going to start with the full composition. And I can just replace it with my timecode clip. Great, that worked perfectly. Let's take a look at the mat key only. I'm going to insert that. And we can see it looks a little bit different now because I was actually using a blending mode in After Effects. And of course the alpha channel can't transport those information. So it probably would have been smarter to not use a blending mode within After Effects for this clip with alpha channel. But what is important to know to make this look a little bit more like the original, we should go to the effects editor and select foreground is pre-multiplied. And you can see as soon as I select it, it looks much closer to the original. And now if we decide we still want to change how much we can see of the clip, we can just change those levels right here. All right, if this video was helpful, feel free to support me by using the buy me a coffee link in the video description and by subscribing to this YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.